Listen, you look busy. Do you mind if I have a look around? Be my guest. Hey, Jaden. You come and see me if you find anything, okay? We're on the same team now. Unrelated to the investigation. Harry County, a sample of no interest. It comes from one of the policemen present on the wasteland. Traces of blood on the railroad track. The blood report indicates an advanced and long-lasting state of exhaustion. Very common. Traces of footprints leading toward the body. They don't look like those of the police. No correlation with the body for the moment. Comment. The victim is lying on his back. No visible signs of violence. A small origami figure in the right hand. Fingers were probably closed after the time of death. The victim is Jeremy Bowles. Declared missing five days ago. See reference file. An orchid was placed on the victim's chest. Superficial wound on the right thigh. Blood analysis suggests it could be post-mortem. Probably a scratch that occurred when the body was being moved. Small wound on the right thigh. And the blood is the same as on the train. His face is covered with mud, like the other victims. Airy comment, sample of no interest, comes to one of the policemen present on the wasteland. Comment sample of no interest comes from one of the policemen present on the wasteland. I'm going to leave. I see you in the office, right? Okay. See you later.
an insect. A wolf's head. A crab. Death. Death. I have the results of your MRI scans. Everything seems to be normal. There is no physical damage from the accident. However, I am worried about your psychological condition. I know it's not easy, but you've got to start over, Ethan. You're not responsible for what happened. It's my fault Jason is dead. He'd still be alive if I'd been looking out for him. It was an accident. Accidents happen every day. You can't blame yourself forever for your son's death. How is Sean? I think he resents the fact that I can't live up to his expectations. I seem incapable of making his mother and him happy. And what about you, Ethan? What do you feel? I stopped living at the same time Jason did. And that car ran into us. Is there something else you wanted to tell me, Ethan? I sometimes have these blackouts, times when I don't know what I'm doing. I recover consciousness sometime later, but I'm someplace else, and I have no idea how I got there. Do you think this could be related to the accident? You suffered a massive concussion and were in a coma for six months. We really don't know what effect a shock like that can have on the brain. That's the end of this session. Uh, we'll continue this conversation next week. You were lucky, Ethan. It's very rare to survive such a traumatic accident. I don't exactly feel lucky, Doctor. You want to eat something? Aren't you going to go play with the other kids? I don't feel like it. How did things go at school today? The teacher yelled at me for being late again. She's going to send me home the next time it happens. I'm sorry about that, Sean. Next time, we'll really pull it together, okay? Is something the matter, Sean? No, I'm all right. I haven't been on a seesaw in a long time. What do you think? Yeah! Come on, Dad! Make me fly! Thank <laughs> you.
What about that merry-go-round? I bet I can push you so fast you won't be able to stay on it. Great! Go on, Dad, as fast as you can! Training for astronauts, though. <laughs> right. You want to go play on the swing? I'll push you. Okay. Pushing dead. Come on, Dad, higher. <laughs> Why'd you stop? play that game anymore. Looks like rain's coming. I think we better go. Okay. You know, sometimes I remember before, I mean, when Jason was still here, sometimes I wish everything could just be the way it was before. Me too, Sean. Me too. Hey, Dad, can I have a ride on the carousel? Can I? Sure. Go pick a horse and get on. I'll get a ticket.
One, please. That's a dollar.
I'm off, Charlene. I'll look at the reports later. I'll cancel all appointments for this afternoon. Okay. Oh, Captain. Agent Norman Jaden from the FBI is here. Jaden, of course. We've been expecting you. I'm in a bit of a hurry. Do you mind tagging along? We can talk as we walk. Yeah, of course. I wanted to introduce myself before getting started, but uh, perhaps there's a better no, time. No, no, it's fine. We just have to get to the press conference. We have them every day now. Believe me, it's not always easy finding something to tell them. Fortunately, today we had some news. Have you met Lieutenant Blake yet? Yeah, we met this morning. He has his own methods, but he's a good cop. I'm sure you'll get him well together. You know how to tie a knot in a necktie. I guess. To be frank with you, I could have done without the FBI on this one, but the press are all over us. This origami killer case crept up on us, and it's fast becoming a national concern. There are hundreds of killers in this country, but what do you know? This guy is exotic. He leaves flowers and origami figures. Work that one out. Then the press get onto it, and we suddenly become the center of the universe. I'm here to arrest a serial killer. With all due respect, sir, the rest of it is none of my business. No, of course not. All I'm asking is that you make progress, and fast. The press want a perpetrator, and we're gonna have to serve him up on a silver platter. Hmm. Not bad. Oh, go see Charlie and she'll show you to your office. Yeah, check in on the press conference if you're interested. It'll give you an idea of the political climate around here. Thank you, sir. Welcome to the club, Jaden. Nice watch. Oh, it's the present we offer to our new lieutenants. We bought the same model each year for the past 20 years for each promotion. It optimizes everybody's time, and it's the kind of thing that always goes down well. You can contribute to our fund if you like. We're still a few dollars short. Congratulate Larry on my behalf. I'll be sure to do that, sir. Captain Perry said you could show me to my office? Yes, of course. Follow me. This... This is my office? That's where I was told to take you. If you need anything, you know where to find me. Okay, time to work. Step one, change the office.
Eight victims in the last three years. All boys, aged between nine and 13. No signs of violence. The victims disappear from public places in broad daylight. No one notices anything. Bodies are found three to five days later, drowned in rainwater. Always the same ritual. An origami in the hand, an orchid on the chest. The victims have always been dead for less than six hours when they were found, which means they remained alive for several days before being drowned. Over 3,500 people questioned. Over 100 suspects interrogated. Not a single lead to go on. Killer has a large comfort zone. He gained confidence rapidly and moved away from his base. Hmm, this won't make the geo profiling any easier. There is always a railroad line adjacent to where the bodies are found. And all the victims disappeared in the fall. killer is white, aged between 30 and 45. He is intelligent, calm, and determined. An organized type. He has a car. He's probably employed, but his work allows him free time. Looks like there's something new. Harry, comment. Tire tracks on the side of the road behind the railroad line. It may be the killer's car. This car is probably a Chevrolet Malibu 83. No prints or specific clues. Hmm. Nothing much to go on. Just one origami store in town. Hmm, a common species. That doesn't help much. The orchid is a common species. It can be found at any flower shop.
we go again. I better go wash my face. I need to take some. I'm gonna faint if I resist. That's all right. I know I can make it. I know. I know I can make it. This is Lieutenant Blake, Mr. Marsh. Could you please tell him what happened? It, it was this afternoon. I went to the park with my son, Sean. We played together for a while, and then he wanted to go on the carousel, so I put him on one of the wooden horses, and when I turned back, Sean had disappeared. Exactly what time did you arrive at the park? Try to remember exactly, Mr. Mars. Every detail can be important. It must have been about... Four fifteen. Yeah, that's it. Four fifteen. I remember exactly because I looked at the clock in the park when we arrived. What was your son wearing when he disappeared? He was wearing a coat. A beige coat. And a pair of pants. Black pants. How could Sean have disappeared without you even noticing? Weren't you right by the carousel? I went to sit on a bench a little way off. I didn't notice right away the carousel had stopped. That must have been when Sean disappeared. You say you took your son to the park after school. But you didn't report him missing until 8.15. Why did it take you so long to contact the police? I searched the whole neighborhood for him. I, I thought he couldn't have gone far. All right. That's all the questions I have for now. You're free to go, Mr. Mars. We'll continue to look for Sean overnight. We'll contact you if we have any more questions. Do... Do you think the origami killer... Listen, your son's probably just run off and he'll turn up in a couple of hours. But what if it is the origami killer? Well, then we have about four days to find him alive. Did they find something? No, nothing yet, but they're gonna keep looking through the night. Do they... do they think it's the origami killer? It, it, it's still too early to say... but it is a possibility. What happened, Ethan? How could you lose Sean like that? You should never have taken your eyes off him! I mean, for God's sake, how hard is it to keep your eye on a child in the park? Why did you leave him, Ethan? Why? Wasn't it enough losing Jason? I'm sorry. It's not what I meant to say.
Good evening. Good evening to you, sir. Can I help you, sir? Well, I hope so. My name's Scott Shelby. I'm a private detective. Uh, I'm investigating the case of the origami killer. I I'd like to ask you a few questions. My son is dead, Mr. Shelby. I have nothing more to say. I also lost someone I loved. I know what you're feeling. Then you will understand that I do not wish to talk about it. The killer has kidnapped another victim. A ten-year-old boy. Like your son, Risa. I have four days before we find his body on a deserted stretch of wasteland. No one did anything to save my son. Now, you would please to move along, sir. Oh, do you sell inhalers? I'm all out, and at least I won't go away completely empty-handed. In the back of this door, to the right. Thanks. Good evening, sir. Are you looking for something in particular? Give me what you got in the register. Don't fucking try anything. Open the register, you dumb fuck. Put the money on the counter. Shit, are you deaf or what? Are you gonna open that fucking register or not? No, sir. You do not have the right to steal that money from me. I have worked very hard to earn it. You cannot have it. What did you say? You're out of your fucking mind, man. You don't get it, do you? I'm gonna put a fucking bullet right between your eyes if you don't do what I say now! You shall not be robbing my register, sir. Fuck! Drop it! Now! Don't move! Hands up! Put your fucking hands up or I'll shoot! So what are you gonna do? Someone could walk in the store any minute and sound the alarm. You haven't got a chance of getting out of this. The first guy to walk in here gets it right in the face. Fuck it, man, you're making me nervous. And when I'm nervous, there's no knowing what I'll do. Uh, my name's Scott. What about you? What's your name? Andrew. My name's Andrew. Do you have anyone you care for in your life? A girlfriend, maybe? A family? Yeah. A little girl. I got a little girl. Her name is Jessica. What would Jessica think if she saw you here? Ask yourself, what would happen to her if things go wrong? Look, it's not worth it. Put the gun down and just walk away. You giving me advice? I'll give you some fucking advice. You haven't done anything serious yet. If you put the gun away, we'll forget about what just happened, and that will be the end of it. Just walk away. Nothing serious. Shit, man! What the fuck do you think I'm doing here? Don't panic. Let's just stay calm. Nobody here wants to hurt you. Uh, we're all just gonna be cool, and everything will be all right. Yeah, yeah. I'm cool, man. Everything's gonna be all fucking right. Nice try. For a second there, you almost had me believing all your shit. And now, give me the money. I'm gonna count to three. One, two, three.
Are you deaf or what? Are you gonna open that fucking register or not? No, sir. You do not have the right to steal that money from me. I have worked very hard to earn it. You cannot have it. <coughs> Punk. Didn't give me any choice. A thousand thank you, sir. I don't know what would have happened if you had not been here. Well, this I didn't come by for nothing. Have a nice day. When my boy, Razor, disappeared, I received a letter with a locker ticket inside. Inside the locker, I found this box. I do not understand what it means, but I think it must be a sort of message from the man who took my son from me. Can I? Please, take the box if it can be of any use to you at all. It did not help me to save Reza, but maybe it will help you find the other little boy. Mr. Shelby. I was beginning to think that there was no good to be found in this place. I can see now that I was wrong. When the parents came home from church, all their children were gone. They searched and called for them, they cried and begged, but it was all to no avail. The children have never been seen again. I have to get out of here and find out what this ticket is about. Mr. Morris! Mr. Morris! Mr. A Mr. few Morris. words! Mr. Morris! Goddamn reporters! They've been camped outside my house all day.
gonna, gonna have to make it through the crowd. I can't, can't take crowds. Just can't handle it. Too many people. Too many people. Line 18, box number 3.
Dr. Sean. Where are you? I'm so cold. Dad! Dad! The killer is white, aged between 30 and 45. He doesn't act on impulse, but plans his crimes in a very meticulous fashion. He doesn't have anything personal against the victims. That's why he covers their faces with mud, to make them anonymous. Why does he kill them if he doesn't have anything against them? For him, they're more of an image, a symbol. That's probably why he gives them an origami figure and an orchid as gifts to apologize for what he's done to them. Very interesting. And where does all that get us? The best way of tracking a predator is to be familiar with his behavior. That may be true in novels, but there's a child's life...